Hey everyone, Jason Dory Woodman. I hope you're all well. Existing homes and heat pumps, renewable technology, can they work together? It's a question that we get asked a lot. And the answer is yes, providing your home meets certain requirements. In the initial stages, you know, if someone calls into the office or sends us um, some inquiries via email, etc., and they say, look, I've got a house that is, for example, 2000, uh, built, in the t built in 2000, it's got moderate um, insulation levels at the moment, we've got a boiler that's getting to the end of its life, we're looking for renewable heat technology to provide our home with heat and hot water, will it work? Now, the initial stages, so if you're looking for an opportunity to, you know, factor in being more sustainable, more, you know, greener and better for the environment, and you want a, a more of an efficient system at home, there are some of the factors which we can actually process very early on, just from either a phone call or some information that you can send us in an email. And one of the key points is an EPC. Your energy performance certificate can tell us a lot. Now, that information that it can provide are the types of windows you have, single or double glazed. Have you had any insulation um, put in into cavity walls, for example? Is there ground floor insulation? Have you got a solid floor, suspended floor? Have, uh, you know, has insulation been put in place for that? Loft insulation, have you got sufficient loft insulation? You know, we'll look at the size of the house. You know, how many bedrooms do you, do you have? How many bathrooms do you need to serve? Um, and then we can get an idea just how much we could see is going to be either a, a situation that could prohibit putting a heat pump in or looking at a solution that a heat pump could work with, say, uh, alongside another boiler or another heating element, or whether your property will should be able to provide its heat and hot water purely 100% from the heat pump itself. So we look at those factors and there are certain ratings on an EPC that you know, have to meet requirements. Now you might have um, maybe a D or an E on your EPC and you might think, well that's not very good. But there could just be a couple of key elements that quite easily, if you're looking to upgrade your heating system, that could just turn that into a far better rating. We have seen on EPCs, for example, that um, certain heating appliances can cause a downturn in their rating. And I'll give you a couple of examples. You know, LPG boilers, oil boilers, uh, non-condensing boilers. Boilers that uh, are available, they could be natural gas, and you think, well, they're not that expensive to run, but they might not have room thermostats. Uh, radiators might not have TRVs. Radiators could be 20 odd years old, and working very inefficiently. You could have a hot water cylinder that isn't sufficiently insulated. It could be you know, a real old style copper cylinder um, that just relies on an immersion for hot water, for example. So there's lots of key factors here. And just by upgrading a few of those elements in your heating system, having control, you know, putting in a very efficient system will then put your rating for your EPC up to another level. Your EPC is key because then it also indicates how many, it's all based on kilowatt hours. And you'll see that there's a, a, an item on the EPC that shows your kilowatt hours and that would be for space heating and hot water. And again, we can get a lot of information from this. If you have an EPC that shows 20, 30, you know, over 30,000 kilowatt hours of space heating, that tells us a couple of points. One, you're either very inefficient at home in terms of your insulation values, or two, it's a sizable property and it requires a lot of heat energy in order to keep you know, the house warm. Um, and your hot water, generally, the scopes of that stay pretty similar across the board. Generally, I'd say probably around about, I don't know, three and a half to 4,000 kilowatt hours, roughly. So that gives us a lot of information. We can obtain this information from you in the very early stages. Floor plans or um, information about the property, you know, how old is it? Um, have you had any extensive work done since the EPC? You may have an EPC, but you might have had a lot of work done there in the first place. We have a lot of people or a lot of customers 
and, and end users and, and people that we've worked for and done work for have been very conscious about you know upgrading their systems and utilizing a greener, more sustainable heating system. So they would take their um, they would take you know positive um, actions as to making sure that they have got more insulation, cavity wall insulation, that everything is double glazed, the loft insulation is at a, um, you know at a decent level, etc. etc. We can get a lot, we can gauge a lot from that. So this property that we're in now. This was, uh, is a renovation, the, the, the owners have not long purchased this property and they've made a few adjustments and looking for options as to what they could do. Very conscious about the environment and wanted to do their bit. So we've got three levels, we've got a ground floor and we've got first and second floor. Second floor was a loft and that's just been changed into a bedroom with a radiator or two in there just to kind of give that heat up in that room. There's radiators on the second floor, uh, on the first floor. The ground floor had radiators. They were looking for an on-floor heating option. So we were going through some of the options. There's an overlay system. Overlay system is where you put a board of a type or another. There are a few different variants of, of available depending on your floor finish. That will pretty much give you, um, it raise the floor level by about 20 mil just for this overlay system. On top of that, then you would need to, depending on your finished floor, you might need to put down a ply board. You might have to latex it. Um, you know, you might have to put a ply board down of about six mil. So then your 20 mil of overlay, six mil of ply, and then obviously your finished floor level. And if you're tiling the floor, for example, you know, you might have three mil of adhesive and eight to 10 mil of tile. So suddenly your floor raises from you know, obviously it's finished floor level, as you were used to, to then bumping up to around about 30, 35 mil in height. Now that can mean that thresholds, doors, architraves, maybe skirtings, etc., may have to be amended in order for you to kind of compensate for that lift in the floor. So we have another option, and you may be able to see this behind me. This is a routed in or grinded in uh, system where you know, special machinery will go in and will cut the grooves out of the existing screen or concrete, enabling us to put a design in for an underfloor heat system that won't affect the height of your floor. This system is very efficient and it takes away a lot of elements in terms of you know, what you may or may not need to do in order to change you know, your, your kind of layouts or your doors or architraves, etc., etc. So this gives you a very, very a superb solution if you've got the capacity to, to enable this um, to, to be put in. And actually, I would say this probably, over the grand scheme of things, it is the most cost-effective solution when it comes to putting in an on-floor heating system into an existing floor. It's perfect, it's a, it's a great system. So we've got this in place. We had a gas boiler, which we have now taken out. They already had an unvented hot water cylinder, which is a pressurized hot water cylinder in an airing cupboard, which we managed to remove, and we replaced that with our new cylinder that go, coincides with our heat pump. And that is where we will be going next. Okay, so the hot water cylinder. So this went into the existing uh, airing cupboard. So this had the cylinder already in place. Now this cupboard is approximately 790 to 800 millimetres wide and about 900 millimetres deep. So this gives us an opportunity then to put in, and hopefully you can see this, this system. So the EGDAN often, depending on the application and size of the heating system, will not require a buffer tank as such. Um, if you see on one of our other videos where we've review, reviewed the Mitsubishi Ikadan, kind of gives an explanation as to why that is. There's a low loss header on the system, for instance, which helps with the um, hydraulics and flows. We've got auto uh, automatic bypasses, which enable the system to kind of run if everything was to shut down, etc., for pump over on it and stuff. So, you know, everything at this point comes to here. There are feeds from the exist uh, from the air source heat pump outside which we call the primaries. These are fed through from, um, from below, through the ceiling, and then up 
into the floor. So they, they're all hidden, so you can't see them, apart from what we've done outside. And dependent on the application of the home, obviously we look to, you know, re- what would be the best requirement and, you know, the less intrusive situation as possible. And then from here, so we've got our underfloor heating system downstairs, we've got radiators upstairs, so we split the system into what we call two zones. Um, so we've got a separate supply going down to the underfloor heating system and then a separate supply dealing with the radiator system and circuit. And then we've got just a range of um, AAVs, for example, air, automatic air vents, and then you might not be able to see it in this, but there are two expansion vessels just at the top. Then we've got a heating control or our interface, which basically tells the heat pump exactly what is required and what needs to be done. And then inside of here is where the brains of the operation is. And then we will put in and you know put in our control. For example, we've got um, heating control. We have got the controller for the interface, which tells the heat pump what to do. And then we've got various pump um, uh, electrics and signal cables from the heat pump and power to the immersion for Legionella, etc., etc. So everything's in there, all gets put through. There are dip switches here, so you can put in different sequences and, and what, you know, what you would require for the home. Then we have, on this side, we have a filter, magnetic filter. This helps maintain a cleansing of the, of the system and to ensure that, you know, it gives us an opportunity to put in inhibitors and biocides, etc., into the system as well. Um, we've got our hot water pump, which basically circulates the hot water that's inside the cylinder through this heat exchanger. And I've explained this in another video, which you can check out. And then our heat pump side goes in through this side of the heat exchanger. So whatever the capacity of the heat, the cylinder is, is the capacity of water in which you have because you don't have a coil inside taking up some of the room. So for example, you know, you could have a 200 litre cylinder, generally in an indirect hot water cylinder, it has a, a coil inside that takes up a certain amount of surface area, and then that could diminish the system to about 185 or 180 litres of, of hot water actually available inside the cylinder, depending on the size of the, of the coils, of course. And this is pretty much your your setup. There are different controls to t- t- turn your uh, water on and off and hot water separately, etc. cetera. Um, but this is what you would expect in your airing cupboard. Okay, so we've looked at the cylinder. We've looked at the heat pump and we've discussed the heat system, underfloor heating and radiators. We've controlling the radiator system on the first floor via a wireless Mitsubishi controller. This will be available to, um, for you to access your heating control via a phone using the MailCloud app. So lots of products in which we install have internet-based and app-based um, facilities, so it just makes life a bit easier. We're all very techy nowadays and we, we like to use things via our phones and laptops. And for the downstairs underfloor heating system, normally our go-to product would be Heatmiser. This gives wireless control as well, so it gives you a bit of versatility as to where you might want to put your controller itself. You will also be able to use it with a hub and access this via your phone as well, either at home or if you're out remotely and you want to put the heating on, um, maybe you've been away on holiday or whatever, um, this gives you a lot of flexibility as to what you want to do. So conclude then, let's conclude this. I mean look, existing homes and heat pumps, is it feasible, is it an option? Yes, it is. We just need to look at what the variables are. You know, will it be suitable for your home? Honestly, we will look at every aspect of it. And if we feel that there is a, a situation that may prohibit you from having a heat pump standalone, or that renewable tech just isn't quite right for your home at this moment, we will let you know. Obviously, there are renewable heat incentives and stuff available at the moment. This will go on until the end of March 2022. So if you're looking to put a heat pump in, for example, you know, now is the time to do it because you're going to benefit from the best grants and incentives that are available at the moment because they will be changing next year. So there's really no better time to do so. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to, you know, get a bit more information about whether you may be considering doing this in your existing home, you know, contact us. We'll, we'll inform you, we get some details and we'll see if it's a feasible option. You can contact us via our website www.dorewoodman.co.uk. You can follow us on Instagram at dore.woodman 
or you can find us on Facebook. But all of our information is available on our website. It's been a pleasure dealing with this video for you. I hope it's given you some information and uh, kind of an outlook as to whether or not this could be feasible for you if you're looking to go green and sustainable. Put any comments you like in, in the um, comments below. Like, share, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell notification and you'll get, inf uh, you know, you'll get information as to when the new videos come out and are available straight away. Um, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.